So you want to be able to use your PS4 controller to play PC games and as well as use it on the Dolphin 5.0 emulator. Well, I'm going to show you how to do that today. A lot of tutorials out there don't seem to show you quite exactly how to use the most out of your PS4 controller for the Dolphin emulator and I'll go through that a little bit later on. But first, you do need this app. It's called ds4windows.com. I'll leave the link in the description. It's a really easy URL. You just type it straight in. Just straight ahead, download now. That's all you need. The last version was updated on October 9th. So what you do is you just download the zip file and it's only 1.12 megabytes. So if you use like a small boot drive, you can leave it on there. And then what it'll do is once you get it to your downloads folder, it'll actually be in a zip folder. So as you can see, I've actually already extracted it, but I'll just do it again. In Windows 10, you do have an extract um, built into Windows 10. So you can just extract it. I'm just going to replace it. Um, and there you go. You need to extract it because if you don't, it makes it a little bit buggy. You can run it, but it's easier without. So now all you want to do is just leave it somewhere where you're going to use it. So I'll just put it right there on my desktop. And then open it up. Now you want to run immediately. Just run the DS4 Windows application. What we'll do is it'll take a wee moment to, to set up. Um, it won't need to check for any updates because there isn't any. <laughs> Um, it's not been updated for some time. Now what you want to do is take your PS4 controller and plug in your USB cable, your charging cable, into your PC. You can connect via Bluetooth as well, but my motherboard isn't linked up to Bluetooth, so you'll need to check another tutorial for that. It's, what's quite neat about this as well is you can connect the USB into USB 3.0 or 2.0. So for example, the, the USB ports in the front of my case are 3.0, so the controller and the application works for both. You can just plug it straight into the front of your computer. Now, take your controller, plug it straight in. Simple enough. And what it'll do is it'll detect the controller. It'll load up a profile for it. And you go over here to controllers. And here it is. It'll give you your ID for your controller. It's linked by USB. It's battery percentage. And the plus sign means it's charging. There's a lot of things you can do. Um, you can go to profiles, auto profile settings. There's a lot of things you can... Um, mess about with and there's a lot that you can you can do as well as connect up to four controllers but the perhaps one of the sort of tiniest things of this but is quite neat is you can use a profile color or a custom color now on the controller it can use some basic colors such as red purple blue um, it can use the tone white uh, as well as uh, orange so it can use any of those colours as well as add white to them. So you can have a lighter red, you could have, in fact, the yellow's one as well. You can have green, a lighter green. Personally, I like cyan. Um, just a bit of blue with some white added to it. It's great. You can't pick every single one, but that's just how it is. You can mess about with all these settings. That's not what I'm here to show you. I'm here to really show you the Dolphin emulator. But from here on, you don't need to worry about any of these settings. I'm just showing you that there is settings. Once you've plugged in the controller, that's it. You can go ahead and play pretty much any game and it'll detect that. For most games, it might confuse you because if the game has already got inbuilt function for an Xbox controller, what this does is it piggybacks the Xbox function of the game and all the command prompts or control prompts will come up in the Xbox controller terms. But really it's just the PS4 controller. So X isn't actually X and A is X. It's just things to remember, but that's you. That's your setup. Go wild, play whatever PC games. If that's all you came here for, then that's fine. I think GTA is one of the uh, GTA Five is one of the few games where you don't need this app. It's already got PS4 controller functionality built in. Right now that you've got the app installed, you can just play any PC games to your heart's content. What you want to do is open up your Dolphin app, which I've already done, and then you go to controllers. Make sure that. You set this to standard controller. I wouldn't use any other one. Uh, this one makes the most sense. Go to configure. What I'll do is uh, I'll refresh these. And usually what I'll be set to is something like keyboard mouse. Something like that. Uh, you want to click click gamepad. Uh, you'll see there it'll be X input gamepad. And then that's DS4 Windows. So the buttons. Um, A is quite simply X. B is circle, x is square, y is triangle, and I like to set z to 
R1, the shoulder button of R, and start as uh, the options button. The shoulder buttons on the GameCube controller, if you've played GameCube before, are quite strange. The back ones, the back triggers, if you press them, press them in slightly, uh, it does one function. If you push them the whole way, it results as a different button. It's a wee bit weird, but we'll get onto that for the triggers. Uh, the control sticks, it's just simply up, down, left, right. And the modifiers, you don't really need to worry about them uh, for most games. You do the exact same for the C-stick, you know, up, down, and you can see it happening here. And obviously I've still got right and left already done. This is where it gets a wee bit strange. For the triggers, I use L1 for the shoulder button. Uh, shoulder is the first L. That's the, the full uh, control. So if you had to press that left trigger all the way down, that's that function. For R, I've got that set to, to nothing. Um, I've left that alone. I've Oh, sorry, I've not actually. Um, I take that back. I've set it to R. So if you press R the whole way down, that's what I've got it set to. For left analog, I've got it set to L2, so you can see me pressing it gradually. And the same with R2. Um, I've got that set to 1 as well. Usually, pressing um, R2 all the way in will be a different function, but in most games it's not really a function. Especially for Spartan Total Warrior, it, it's not a different function. Whereas the left shoulder, so the left trigger, was used as two functions, pressing it analog and full in. That's why I've got them set on different buttons. If it's that much of a problem, if you find out that maybe in whatever game you're playing, it's being registered, it can't tell the two different moves apart or the two different buttons apart. Set one to say R3 or L2 when you press in the analog stick or some other button that's not used in the controller. And in D-pad's quite simple, north, south, west and east buttons, so up, down, and you can see them all being pressed there. This is uh, another function as well, the threshold function. You change this and it'll set when it kicks in. So if I hold down R2 now, and then I'm not the whole way down, but that's it registering now. See, once I get to this point, and then I'm not the whole way down, but it's now registering it as a full click. So it's now registering it as if I put it all the way down. You can mess about with that um, to see how you need it, but for the most part, you won't really need to worry about that. And make sure, once you're done, to make a profile, call it something, and save it. So that way, that if something ever happens, you definitely don't, le they definitely don't lose it. As well as this, I nearly forgot to mention, the rumble controls are really, really quite simple. So I'll just clear them. All you do is you click on one, press select, click on the other one, press select, apply, OK, I know that's you. The rumble function is now on the controller. So many people who have done tutorials on how to get the GameCube controller uh, emulated with using a PS4 controller, uh, forget that function. Um, if, the, if the game had rumble functions, then you want to play it as naturally as it, as it was then, and that, that's that really. You just press OK, and then, and that's you, pretty much. There's nothing else to say. I, I think I've rambled on long enough, but that's it. That's all you need to know. You can just go ahead and play GameCube games. Um, you can play any PC games as well. So thanks very much. Feel free to check out any of my videos on gameplay or speedruns. Hopefully I come up with another tutorial in the future that I think people will find useful.